Well, I'll let you know how my marathon training is going. I ordered five guys for lunch, Chinese food for dinner, and have barely left this room, even though it was a bright, sunny day on a Saturday. So it wasn't great. Wasn't a great day for the old marathon training. Wasn't a great day for me touching grass. But in my defense, in my defense, I'm having a better day than Michael Oliver, who was the referee of the FA Cup semifinal between Manchester City and Chelsea. Because I, you like you, you, you know me, you know me. What am I going to talk about? What's a guilty pleasure of mine? Penalty decisions, right? And so that's what we're going to talk about. One of the most obvious missed penalty calls in a very important match. I mean, this is an FA Cup semifinal. What else does Chelsea? I mean, Chelsea actually could get into Europe somehow, but Chelsea. This is Chelsea Super Bowl, right? Uh, for Manchester City, it's just another Saturday because you know they're still. Well, I guess they're not top of the league because of Arsenal, but this is a very big deal, right? Everybody at least tells me the FA Cup is an absolutely massive deal. And this is a one-goal game, right? Manchester City wins it 1-0 thanks to Bernardo Silva following up like a saved shot, cross, whatever. And it was a messy game. We had Nicholas Jackson missing like... 17 1v1s looked a lot like my striker and football manager most of the time. It's amazing how inefficient Nicholas Jackson is. He gets himself into great positions, but my goodness, he just can't put the ball in the net consistently at all to save his life. Point is, Chelsea probably should have been able to win this game, and they missed out on a massive piece of help, which would have been a penalty early in the second half. It's a free kick for Cole Palmer outside the box, and he takes it, and this is the broadcast angle. Also keep in mind, this is likely what the VAR person is also looking at here. Cole Palmer's running up, he strikes the ball, and it kind of hits Jack Grealish's arm. It is hard to tell, though, from this angle, what's happening. It does not look like, from this angle, you see there might just be the slightest of contact, but it does not look significant enough. And if you were, uh, you know, maybe if you're in a VAR room, you're watching that and you're going, oh, I might have just grazed the shirt, but we're not going to make that call in the FA Cup semifinal. Unfortunately, for that person in the VAR booth that might be thinking that way, this angle exists. This is an angle from right behind the ball. And it tells a very different story. That's Mauricio Pochettino, by the way, who's got to be losing his ever-loving mind having watched things from this angle, right? That hits Jack Grealish's arm. It's not particularly close. He kind of knocks it into his body. He uses his arm. Not And not only does it hit his arm, this ball looks like it's got a pretty good chance. Jack Grealish is actually trying to save himself here because he's right in the way of the ball. The only reason he hits it with his arm is because he's jumping out of the way because he doesn't want to get a hit in the stomach. That's what's happening. That ball's headed right for him, and he jumps out of the way and clips it with his arm, and it kind of helicopters away from the goal. Now, that angle shows you very clearly that this should have been a penalty. The only reason that I'm making this like VAR-centered argument around the, the, the kind of game footage, like what we saw on TV, is that's the only rational explanation for me as to how somebody working in a VAR booth watches this play 20 times and concludes that it shouldn't be a penalty. Because by every rule of the game, once you see more replays from more angles, this has to be a penalty. It, simp it, it has to be, right? Or else the integrity of the game is is going away right because if this is not a penalty then people that are defending free kicks and walls can just kind of do this right but it's incidental contact or it's not that significant i mean that that's what's happening here right i mean he hits the ball into his own body and then it spins away like it is a penalty every day and twice on sunday this is the same as uh, i saw some people debating like, what well, was he looking at the ball? Was he looking at the player? One, obviously he was. He's moving his stomach out of the way. But two, I've had, we've had this conversation before. If you're a, a fullback defending a winger, right, uh, you are not able to make yourself bigger with your arms. That's against the rules, right? Even though it would be incidental contact if you just happen to strike a pose like you were trying to square dance with, you know, the winger or something, and you just go, ha-ha! You know, you just drop into one of those. Well, even if they cross it from right in front of you and it hits your arm, it's still a penalty. Or else every defender ever is going to come out like spread eagle on you and it's going to be incidental contact or the ball happens to hit them in the arm. You have to not have your arm in an unnatural position where it's going to be able to 
impede what the other team is trying to do. And that's exactly what Jack Grealish is doing here. There's no argument that I know of in any way that would prevent this from being a penalty. He has his arm in an unnatural position, clearly strikes the ball in the box, right? And, the, and he even is adjusting his body to get out of the way of the play. I mean, this is a stone, stone cold penalty, and you have to call it. And the fact that they don't call it is absurd. Right. And I'm sorry. It's an FA Cup semifinal. We're in Wembley. Get more cameras. Like, I realize that if you're watching this specific angle, it doesn't look like it. But you know what? That guy that handled the ball cost a hundred million dollars. Why don't we just roll like a million of that into getting a few more cameras around the ground? If this is the only angle that guy's looking at. Now, I don't know. I'm assuming VAR has a lot more angles, but if they have a lot more angles, you're telling me one of those angles doesn't show you this, doesn't show you that that ball has clearly been hit with Jack Grealish's arm. Dude, I, I am not, like, I'm not a Chelsea fan here, right? I, I make fun of everybody equally, or at least I try to. But if, if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd be incensed. This is ridiculous. This is a robbery. Chelsea should have been level in this game anyways. Like, City should not have won this in regulation. With this penalty and one of Jackson's chances, Chelsea should have been winning this game. It's uh, like, the, in, <laughs> what else are they playing for this year, right? This is a rolling daytime soap opera of a club, right? And we're just waiting to see who gets in a fist fight over the next penalty. But in one match at Wembley in the FA Cup semifinal, Chelsea did enough. They did enough. They were playing a beleaguered, depressed, tired Manchester City team coming off 120 minutes midweek and penalties in a loss, right, with no Erling Holland, and they did enough, and they didn't get the call. And I'm sorry, this is what VAR is supposed to exist to prevent, right? We, like, we can have conversations about how the rule is applied with various types of tackles and whatever, but VAR should exist, and review in sports should exist to change obvious mistakes. And it does not get much more obvious than this. I mean, if you'd shown somebody this play and told them that it happened before VAR or whatever, and that VAR was designed to you know, prevent this type of play, that'd be entirely believable. You'd be like, oh, hell yeah, I'm sold on that pitch. Bring in the video reviews. I don't want any of this nonsense anymore, but this nonsense is still here. Right, I get if we're going to have a debate about like, well, that was like an accidental collision instead of a malicious tackle or whatever. And that's going to be a complex part of VAR for a long time. But the one thing you have to get right for people to stay on Team VAR is the obvious shit. Like you have to be able to get the obvious stuff. And if you're not getting the obvious stuff, something needs to change. Either we need somebody with more composure in the VAR booth. We need somebody that's going to take a little bit more time with it. We need to improve the communication so that the referee can hold play. We need somebody assessing every ball played at speed in the box to make sure it's a, something, right? So that this does not happen again. Because this is a match that determines tens of millions of dollars. This is a legacy deciding match, right? If Pochettino and Chelsea can somehow shit out an FA Cup, that changes the whole way their season is perceived, changes the way their players are perceived, gives them a massive stage to play on at the end of the season. Even something as simple as Thiago Silva is probably in his last year at Chelsea, a chance to win a major trophy for the ageless wonder and send him off into the sunset. I don't know. All of those different things right? Hinge on being able to make this call. And it is so easy. I mean, my goodness, this was an easy call to make. And if it wasn't an easy call to make, because if the only view they had was this one, you got to change the system. You, you, you have to. There's so much dang money in this league. I mean, they just promised to send 33 million more down to the EFL. You can't siphon off 500,000 or a million. I mean, you're putting in semi-automatic VAR next year. We can't figure out if a ball obviously hits some dude's arm in the box. Let's go, people. 21st century. We have the technology. And if we're not using it right, then what the hell's the point?